Hey everybody, it's Brian, and this is a What Has Brian Been Doing video. Um, first off, I am sick, so my voice may crack or give out. I apologize. This is like literally the tenth time I've tried just making this video, so <laughs> bear with me. Um, been sleeping a lot, been taking a lot of vitamin C and medication and things like that. No, I'm not dying. It's just the cold. I live in Michigan, and everybody's sick this time of year. Um, so... Any free time I've had really has been in Call of Duty or Subnautica. I love those two video games. Cannot wait for the new Subnautica Below Zero to come out. Looks just amazing. Um, when my voice is not giving out, I've been working on some courses on Udemy. Uh, I've kind of wrapped up Dart and Flutter, but then, of course, they changed the underlying technology. So I had to go back and redo all the GitHub code. And now I'm at the point of, do I just want to re-record all those videos, knowing that was like an entire year worth of recording? Um, so I've kind of put that on the back burner. I've been working on Qt. I've done core, beginner, intermediate, advanced, and I'm branching off into the different Qt technologies now, uh, like Qt widgets. I'm going to, maybe if my voice will stay with me here, I'm going to very, very soon within the next 30 days release Qt widgets for beginners, which is going to go over beginners desktop programming. And I'm going to break each one of these technology stacks out. So we've already done Qt core. I'm starting down the cute widgets and I'm going to do beginners and then later in the future, intermediate advance. And yes, before you ask, I am going to cover Python and a complete QML beginners, intermediate advance. Um, these have kind of been on the back burner because cute's about to change. And I'll talk about that in a minute, but cute is really on the cusp of making some major changes in the background. But for Python, yeah, I've actually thought about doing Python right from the beginning, like what is Python, Python 101, you know, what's a variable, all the way up to integrating Python with Qt. That'll take a long, long time if I do that, but I think it'll be worth it. Flipping back to my little tabs here, um, just been kind of working a little bit on Void Realms, the YouTube channel. I cannot believe we have 67,000 subscribers. That's nuts. Um, it's way beyond where I thought it would ever go. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of blown away. Um, been looking at Qt, uh, done some videos for Qt and them officially, and I've really been watching them to see how they're going to move in the future. Well, like I said, Qt is on the verge of changes, and they almost have to change because they've got competition, big competition now. For example, Flutter. Do not underestimate Dart and Flutter. Dart as a language is actually really, really cool. And then when you take Flutter and slap it on top, realize that Flutter runs on mobile devices, but it could very easily be ported to desktops and as we speak is being moved to desktops. So Dart and Flutter, and they may not call it Flutter on the desktop, but this technology is going to explode and it's going to tightly integrate with everything Google. So yeah, right out of the gate, this is very strong. I mean, even in alpha, I was surprised how strong this was. Now, not to downplay Qt, I think Qt is still the dominant king. And 2020 is right around the corner. And so is Qt 6. And Qt 6 is going to be, they're not joking when they say the next big release. There's going to be big changes. Um, most notably, they're going to go away from QMake over to CMake. They're going to keep QMake in the background. Uh, but they're going to switch over to CMake, and they're going to just stop developing QMake, which maybe they should have done that years ago. I don't know, but uh, it'll be interesting to see how their customers adopt that. But they're also bringing in the next generation of QML, and that's why instead of going into QML, I went Qt Widgets because it gives me time to figure out what they're doing. Um, Qt's usually really good at backwards compatibility, but I've already learned that lesson the hard way with Flutter and Dart. I don't want to make, you know, an entire six months or years worth of recording to find out something changed and now I've got to re-record everything. But they're going to do things like strong typing. I've noticed this is a general trend. A lot of the zero typing or weak typing languages are now going back to strong. And I think there's a reason for that. It's because it's almost impossible to figure out with weak typing what you're actually doing as far as an IDE goes. And they're going to make JavaScript optional. They're going to remove QML versioning. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. That is just something I hated about QML is versioning. And they're going to remove some duplicate data structures and do some general house cleaning. 
and they're going to support compiling QML to efficient C++ and native code. What does this mean? I think that means, and I'm probably just going crazy on conspiracy theories here, I think if you look at Qt, fundamentally, they realize that C++, as powerful it is, has a massive learning curve, so they're trying to use simpler languages like QML and Python to adopt more programmers into their ecosystem. They almost have to. I mean, if you work with Qt and then work with Dart, and Dart is just, it's ridiculously powerful and simple. It's very, very clean language. I was surprised. So I think that's what they're trying to do. And then they're just going to do better tooling integration and things like that, next-gen graphics, unified consistent tooling, uh, enhancing their C++ APIs. I don't want the thought process to be they're going to get rid of C++. I think C++ is always going to be at the core of Qt and, well, most frameworks. But I think they're adding in layers of user functionality on top of that, like QML and Python. It makes a very smart move marketing-wise. And then language support Python is officially going to be supported. That is huge. Um, I mean, anybody that's used Python realizes just how easy Python is. And honestly, if they just did away a QML altogether and just used Python, that would be just amazing. Um, I don't know. I've never really been a fan of QML. It has its place, but I've never really just adopted it the way I've adopted other things. It's very powerful. I don't want to downplay it. It's just one of those things that I just preference-wise haven't really cared for. I think this is going to be massive, and that's why I've been staying away from making QML videos, because there is going to be sweeping changes. And right now, everybody's kind of holding their breath to see what's going to happen. So that, in a nutshell, is where I've been and what I've been doing. Um, if you're ever bored, go on out to Facebook. Look for the Void Realms Facebook group, and I'm usually hanging out in there. I'll talk to you guys later.